Today we're going to be learning Baba Bachar Daf Samach Aleph. Uh, we're going to start a new chapter, a new week, Shavuot Tov. Uh, our chapter, Hamochir et Habay. The main idea of our chapter is selling items. When you sell something and you say, I'm selling a particular item, what is included in that item? Okay, our first topic is going to be, I sell you a house. What parts are included, what are not included? Now, you might have thought we mean, do you include the furniture in that? That's not what we're going to be talking about. Um, it kind of reminded me, a little bit different, but it reminded me of when you go to buy toys, let's say, particularly kids' toys, I can think of this, and they're battery-operated toys, and then there's a thing that says no batteries included, right? So that nobody comes and claims, hey, you know, this was supposed to include batteries, and why doesn't it include batteries, and we'll sue you for that, you know, so they want to make sure you should just know this doesn't include batteries. Now, in those days, they weren't as particular about being clear-cut about what it was they were selling, and therefore, we have all these guidelines as to what it means when you sell, I'm selling it, when you say I'm selling a house or whatever it might be. And it's going to be another long chapter getting into, you know, we'll have this chapter. Then there's the next one is Mocher Tasfina. It's not such a long chapter, but between that and Mocher Tasfina, we're going to get into that the next time. Mocher Peirot. Okay. So we have a, a whole bunch of chapters relating to all sorts of issues that really that come up with sales. So let's start off. Now, the problem here is going to be that we don't exactly know what all these items are. What is a yitzia? Okay. So nowadays it's a balcony in Hebrew, modern Hebrew. Um, we'll see. The Gemara is going to already bring two interpretations. And again, this is always going to be tricky because number one, people living in the Amoraim time period were living in a different place and in a different time and didn't necessarily know the terms that the Gemara was used, the Mishnah was used. Number two, commentaries that explain what the Amoraim say also weren't living at the same time and in the same place and well, don't necessarily understand what they're referring to. So it's going to be a little tricky. And when I mean tricky, what I mean is there's a lot of different interpretations here. So it doesn't include the Yitzia, whatever the Yitzia is, even if it opens up into the house. And not the room that's even further in. Oh, so we'll get to this, by the way. Not the room that's even more... Okay, what it means, lifnim, really, lifnim uh, menu means, I think more, lifnim usually means inside, but it means really outside. In other words, not even another kind of room that's, you would say, kind of less even you would think was included, which obviously begs the question. If the first one isn't included, obviously the second one isn't. What's the purpose of bringing that second case? And again, we don't exactly know what it's referring to yet. We'll get to it in the Gemara. Velo etagag, bizman sheyesh lo ma'ake, gavo asarat v'chim, and not a roof. If it has, okay, now you would think, what do you mean? I sell you a house, my roof isn't included? Well, here they would use their roofs for all sorts of things, which we learned over time, like drying out their fruits. And if it was a roof that people would use, then I sold you a house, it didn't include the roof. As long as, though, it's not included if it has a ma'ake, gavo asarat v'chim, it has... Uh, uh, I forget the word, a parapet, I think is the word around it, right? Where it has a wall around it, 10 tefachim high, which basically designates it, we know from laws of Shabbat, as its own in its own domain, okay? That we learned from Eruvin, Shabbat, all that. So if it's considered, if it has a wall around it, 10 tefachim high or a fence, blocking it in that roof, then it's already considered like its own room and it's not part of the house, its own space, I would say, not room, because there's lots of own, our own rooms in the house, but it's not a, it's a separate space. So Rabbi Yehuda says, if it has, forget about 10 tefachim, you don't need that. You just need a tzuat petach for it to be considered its own thing. This we know from Eruvim, what's that, right? Two beams straight up and one cross beam, right, where it has a semblance of a doorway. If it has a semblance of a doorway to it, this roof, then it's its own domain, even if it's not a ten tefachim high fence around it. Okay. Um, right. I just want to go back to the cheder, because now I remember. The cheder, they don't really define in the Gemara, so let's look at the Rashban here on the Mishnah. The cheder, which is lifnim, so apapishu lifnim in abayit, even though it's more internal to the house, meaning more like the property, but not connected, or upatuach letocho, and it's open to the house, udri satolabai, and people walk through it when they, right, walk through the house, when they go in and out, de kevan de ain't tash mishokeshel bayit, but 
it's not used like houses use. So they do actually mean an inner house, okay? So it's not like I said before. They do mean an inner house, but it's It's kind of like a giant box. It's not really a room. It's like a giant, like a, like we have storage closets, like a giant storage room. Well, I would say giant for storage, small for room, right? It's a space that's used really for storage. But it's, and it's kind of attached to the house, but not exactly part of the house. Okay, it's not like a room in the house, but maybe somewhere on the side. So now the Gemara says, Ma Yitzia. So what is this Yitzia we were talking about? Haka Tirgamu, here they explained Apta. Now Apta we saw yesterday, which was the loft. Could be a loft, but the Rashban here explains, it's a binyan namuch etzel abayit mitzido mechorav. It's like a little small structure that people would use kind of like a house, like they would use it not for storage, like the chedel, shalifnim and abayit. That was really more storage. This was used more similarly to a house, but it's attached to the house. It's not part of the central house. It's behind it, next to it, something like that. Rav Yosef Amar, bid kachalila. It's not really the same kind of a room. It's a room with a lot of holes. That's what Khalila means. What it really means is it has a lot of windows. And they would either use it for just sitting in, okay? Um, they would use it for airing out, like when it's really hot, today, like, you know, middle of August, end of August. So it would be, you know, you would, it would have a lot of windows and the air would come through there. So it was a good area to sit in. So... Now, we have two interpretations of what this is. Now, if you're the one who holds it, Apta isn't sold. Apta is used much more like the house. It's just a regular room. Obviously, then, the, if that's not included, then the Bidcha Khalila for sure would not be included. The one who says it's this windowed space. But for sure, an Apta would be sold with the house because this Beit Kachalila, by the way, I forgot to mention, some people say it was just like a decorative room and, and other people say it was really for cooling off, but either which way, if this one's not included and that's what this means, this Yitzia, well, the Apta for sure would be part of the house because that's more similar to the use of the house. Tani Rav Yosef. Now Rav Yosef brings a bright and says, Shalosh Shemot Yesh. There's three Words that all describe the same thing as a yetzia, which is some sort of small room. Yetzia, sela, and ta. Ta is a cell, okay? A, a tsela, if we're going to see, it was used to describe a small room, chamber, okay? And the yetzia, these are all words like a chamber, a room, a, you know, a, 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 a cubby, something, okay? It's some sort of word. It's used to describe a small room that's off of the main area. And where did these three words come up? That basically Rabbi Yosef brings this bright that says, oh, these three words we can find in Tanakh, either in Sefer Malachim, in the description of the temple, or in Yechezkel, in the description of the temple. Okay, we have descriptions of the temple, of the, what the third temple is going to look like in Yechezkel, and also the description of the set of the first temple that Shlomo built, and we're going to see right now. So Yitzia, Tachtona, so Yitzia, Yitzia, where do we see Yitzia? In Sefer Malachim, in the temple, Dichtiv, Hayitzia Hatachtona Hamesh Ba'ama Ruchba. Okay, this pasuk is in Sefer Malachim Aleph, chapter six, verse six. Yitzia Tachtona. I'm going to read the whole pasuk, and we'll learn a little bit about the temple and things that were in the temple. Okay, we're before we even get there, I'm going to show you the maps. Okay, here's a whole picture of our temple. You have the the Beit Hamikdash. You walk into the Ezra Nashim from the east. And now we're going to go to the westernmost point, which there's the Hechal, the sanctuary. In there is the Kodesh Kodeshim, the, the Holy of Holies. Now, we usually think it kind of ends there, but it doesn't end there. Okay, beyond that, there's a wall, a thick wall, which we'll see is five amo wide. And then there's these cubbies. Okay, they're small rooms, chambers. Okay, they're called Ta'im here. Okay, they're also called Tzla'ot. And they're also called Yitzia. Okay, we're going to see that. So... These behind the Kodesh Kodeshim are these Ta'im, and they went three floors high. And that's what this is going to say. On the lower floor, it was five ama wide. Hatichona, the middle floor was sheish ama ba'ochba, ba'ochba, it was six ama wide. And the third level up, it was seven. Okay? Now, what they did is, how did they work it? Well, this wall that looks just like a solid wall, as it went up, it got narrower. And they describe it that the 
that each one went in. So the, the wall went in one ama, and then the six amo sat on that. Okay, so and this is a way they didn't want to ruin the walls by by hammering things in, you know, and, and that. So they built the wall, they basically got maps, noise. Um, the wall would go in uh, an ama, and then in an ama flight higher, and the being and the, the ceiling would rest on that. Okay, the, the floor of one, the ceiling of the next. And that way it was three high, five, six, seven. Okay. That's and what is it called here? A yitzia. Okay, these are small rooms. Right? You can see they're small because they're only five, six, or seven ama wide. Sela dikhtiv. And this is in Yechezkel describing the same thing. In Yechezkel 41, verse 6. Hatzlaot sela al tsela shalosh ushloshin pa'amin. So these rooms that are called the tzela, they were tzela al tzela, one near the other. Okay, as you see from the picture. Okay, this is a little different. Here he gets to 33 because in this picture there's 13 because in the second temple there were 13. We don't have a description here of the second temple. But they were three. When he describes the future one, there's um, five on one side, five on the other side, right? Five on the north, five on the south, and one on the west, which is the one we were looking at. And so 11 altogether times three would be 33. And and here we're getting actually a different description. Now we're talking about these te'im. This is in a totally other side of the temple. When you go into the entrance of the Ezra Nashim on the eastern side, as you walk in, so there were chambers here. Some people think they were outside. Some people think they were inside the wall. So those chambers, it says... Um, it was kane echad orech the kane acharocha. The kane was a, is a reed, but there was a person in Yechesha, I think it was even a malach who brings this kane. It was a reed that was six ama wide, and basically Yechesha used that when he was talking about the third temple for measurement. Okay, so the kane was showing the measurements. So it was this ta that they're talking about there. It was one ama wide and one ama long. Ubena taim. There were a bunch of taim. I think there were six. Between each tile was chaven shabot. There was a wall that was five um, wide. So here you see the same words, sela, yitzia, and ta, all meaning small chambers, rooms. If you want to prove not from the Tanakh, but we're going to bring a Mishnah where it also uses the, the word ta, you can prove it from here. Kotel Now here's a description of Masechet Mido. We'll get there. It's actually Mishnayot only, but it's in the, the cycle of the Dafyomi, very much toward the end. And there we have this um, the this description of how long okay it's midot measurements how long the whole area was the the inner area of the Ezra, the azara okay which ended right you would think it ended at the kodesh kodeshim but no it doesn't because beyond the kodesh kodeshim right they're basically going through the room this measured this this measured that this measured that now we're toward the end of this mishnah or toward this section kotel haichal sheish. The wall behind the Kodesh Kodeshim was six wide. Hata shesh, the chamber here was six. There you see chamber is ta. And the kotel hata and the, and the wall beyond the chamber was five. And that's just getting to the measurements that the whole thing was 100 for just at the end, where we basically end up counting 17. We had 11 beyond the Eichal, plus another six at the wall of the Eichal. That gets you 17. I'm a Merzutra. Okay, that, now we're done with that whole section. What is the Yitzia? And where do we see that mentioned in Tanakh or in Mishnah in other words that describe the same thing? Now we want to get back to our topic. If we're talking about this Yitzia that is not considered part of the sale, it has to be at least Arba Amo, like four by four. If it's not a four by four space, it's just not important enough. And it's obviously canceled to the house and just part of the house. Amalei Ravina Le Ravina now says to Marzutra, "The deed after Amar to add the Habe Arab Amor, and the Mayata Gabe board, it's not low to board below to do it. Apa Bishkadavla Umka Beruma. Let me let me stop because I'm I said I read too much without explaining. So even though I'm stopping mid sentence, Ravina says to Marzutra, You think it has to be four Amot for it not to be included in anything less than four Amot would just be included in the sale? But that doesn't make sense with the following mission. Okay. So Ladiga, according to you, the Amar that you said Ad have Arba Mod until it's Arba Mod, I'm just going back to the beginning and explaining. Elameata, well, according to you, like a bay bore when it comes to a pit, Ditna, what does it say about a pit? Now, a pit is not usually four amo by four amo, but it's usually much narrower. I mean, how much narrower, but it's it's narrower than four by four. Okay, four 
by four on what's pretty wide for a boar. So basically what he's saying is, then according to you, a boar would be nullified to the house and should be included in a sale. But what does it say in the Mishnah that we're going to get to in Daf Samach Dalit? Lo etabul, velo etadul. If you sell a house, it doesn't include a boar, doesn't include a dude. These are two different kinds of a well and a cistern, right? Or a pit or a cistern. Where? If I sell you a house and I say, I'm giving you this house and till its depths and up to the sky. That really means, okay? You would think that means even things dug into the ground on the property of the house. But no, it doesn't. It means I'm giving you rights to dig if you want. And I'm giving you rights to build. But if there's already a bore there, that bore is mine. I'm keeping the bore. I don't include that in the sale of a house. If I was selling a bore, I would say I'm selling the bore. Now, hachinami, are you going to say the following? But if it's less than four amot wide, it will be included. Well, that doesn't sound like what the mission is talking about because most borot are not four amot wide. So to which he answers, what are you talking about? Hachi, after you're comparing two totally different things. When I said that the room that's next to the house has to have four amot, if we're going to say it's not included, otherwise it's included in the sale if it's less, that's because it's a room in a house. When it comes to a boar, a boar is not a house. A boar has, is, has a totally different purpose than a house does. The house is for living. The boar is for water. So they're two very different things. So of course, a boar is not included, even if it's less than four ama. But But here, the, the room, the yitzia, is, is for the same kind of purpose as the house is for. It's just an add-on. So the add-on is not, right? And then the add-on would be included if it's really small, because then it's just part of the house. If it's bigger and on its own, it has its own domain, then it won't be. So if it's four on but wide, it's already considered its own thing. But if not, it's not. Now we get to the cheder. And the question about the cheder that I mentioned in the mission is, the cheder, which was really used more for storage, should obviously not be part of the, of the, the deal, if the yitzia is not even part of the deal, when the yitzia is used for a very similar purpose than the house is, and the cheder is not. So why do you even have to mention this? So which the Gemara says, right? Below the cheder so the pnei menu, not the room that's that's in in further in. Has the yitzia lo mizdav and cheder mebayev the yitzia is in sold. Of course, the room wouldn't be sold. So what do you need this for? Turning now to Amabed. It's needed for the following case. As Rav Nachman says, okay, I didn't explain it yet, but we're going to then spend most of our daf about Rav Nachman. So what it says is, even if I said, I'm selling you this house and I gave you the borders, okay, and I said on the left, it borders on this person's property and on the right, it borders on that person's property and on the, 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 the north and south or whatever, right, east, west, and I give all the boundaries. And within those boundaries is the cheder, is that room. Even though I gave you all the boundaries of the house and the space the house is on, it still doesn't include the room. That's why it added this extra case. It wanted you to know that. Now, here's a big debate among the commentaries. And it's interesting about how to read these things. It's basically saying that room, that extra line is added into the mission to teach you that even if you gave me the boundaries, and the reason is really we'll see according to Rav Nachman, that when I was giving you the boundaries, I was just trying to say, where is the house? The house is in this area. Doesn't mean that I was saying you have everything in that area. So the question is, is the room added here to tell you nothing really is included other than the house, even though I designated the boundaries, even the Yitzia, let's say, or is it saying, no, the room is added into the Mishnah specifically to say that if you gave the boundaries, the room wouldn't be included, but the yitzia would be. Okay, again, depending on how you define yitzia. But the thing that's closer to the use of the house then would be included, the room would not be. Or maybe it just means nothing is included other than the house. And the whole added line here is just saying, it's just coming to teach you in general, not just for the room, but in general, whatever is not included in a house still won't be included in the sale of a house, still won't be included even if you demarcated the boundaries of the whole area where all that stuff is in. Because again, the idea is that when you demarcate the borders, it's really just not really to say you get everything in those boundaries, but it's to say that's where this house is. And just as Rav Nachman says, what we're going to do now for almost the rest of the daf, we're going to read what Rav Nachman says about this halacha, where we see that this is just like Rav Nachman, about a house. He says it about a field. 
okay, something very similar. Then we're going to say, why do you have to say it in both cases? And then we're going to go back to some other small thing. So to Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Ravua. Rav Nachman says in the name of Rav Ravua, Hamochel Bayit L'chavero, Bibira Gedola. If you sell a house to someone in a Bira Gedola. Now, what is a Bira Gedola? Good question. So Rashi says it's like a big, uh, sorry, the Rashbam says it's like a big house it opens up into other houses. Now it's not exactly a house. It's like almost like a gated community where we have like joint space that opens up into a lot of other spaces. Okay. Now, if I say I'm selling you a house in this complex, okay, it's like saying I'm selling you a house in a complex. Now I own the whole complex. So I'm selling you a house. Now I didn't say in a complex, but it is in a complex. Now, if I say I'm selling you this house in this complex. Now, I say I'm selling you this house, but I say it's in this complex and I give you the boundaries of the complex and I own the whole complex. Now, I'm not selling you the whole complex, right? I'm selling you just the house. So even though I set out those boundaries of the whole section, mitzarim your chivlo. I was just trying to show you where the house is. You don't think it's my house. It's in a different complex. It's in this one. Okay. And then that's, that's this halach. To which the Gemara says, okay, it's pretty obvious halach. If I told you I'm selling you a house in a complex, obviously I meant a house in a complex and the house, not the complex. So what is Rav Nachman teaching us? Hey, what's the case? You might remember this language from the Kad and the Chavid in Baba Kama. If it's a case where everybody calls a house a house and the bira bira, and let's just call it a complex for our purposes, and the complex a complex, pshita, it's obvious. By it's zavinla, bira lo zavinla. Obviously, you sold them the house, not the complex. So there's nothing to talk about. Ela de la bira nani karula by it. Now, if you sometimes call the complex a house and you call the whole thing a house, and I said, I'm selling you this house in this complex, which is demarcated by these boundaries, and some people call a complex a house, then very clearly, you can easily claim that I sold you the entire thing because the word house also means complex and they gave you all the boundaries of the entire complex. So in that case, if I said, I'm selling you a house and I said in these boundaries and the whole thing could be called a house, then I'm obviously you have a very strong claim and you can take the entire thing. So what's the case? Lutzricha, Rav Nachman must have been talking about, and this sounds very much like Han Chavid. Some people have Deruba, some people have Deika, okay? Let's just go with Deika. That some people, Karo Labai Bai, Ulibi Rabi Ra, some people call a house a house and a Bira Bira, a complex a complex, Vika Nami, and there are some though, Dilibira Karo Labai. Some people call a Bira a house. Now, if I say I'm selling you a house, in, right, and then I say, and here are the boundaries. And some people call the whole complex a house. Then you might have thought, and in that case, and some people do call it, but not everybody. You might claim, you might try to claim, hey, I sold you the whole thing. is coming to teach you is, I should have written. If I was really selling you the whole thing, I should have written. I'm not leaving anything here over for myself. But I didn't write that. If I didn't write that, the assumption is I left stuff for myself. And why is this the assumption? Well, it's not so much that we don't, we don't really know what I meant. But what really is going on is that there's laws of Hamotzi, the, the principle. It could be I sold you just a house because some people call a house a house and a bira a bira. It could be I was selling you the whole thing, right? And then, by the way, if I was selling you only the house, I was just giving you the boundaries of where you could find that house. It's like saying, you know, I live on Bento Street. So it's like saying my house on Bento Street. Okay, you know, I'm not selling you all of Bento Street. I was just trying to identify which house it was because I also have a house, let's say, on, you know, on Pine Street. And, okay, now, um, so the burden of proof is on you to prove it. And since you can't prove it, what I meant, so you don't get it, okay? And that's based on the principle, you want to get something? Well, you have to prove it. And since there is reason to think that maybe I only sold you the house, because some people would have, you know, only call a bira, bira, not a house, then the burden of proof is on you. 
only if I said and I wrote in it and I'm not leaving anything for myself, then it would be clear I mean the whole thing. And furthermore, Rav Nachman says on another case about a field, I'm Rav Nachman, I'm Rav Ravua. Rav Nachman says the name of Rav Ravua again. If I sell you a field in a big um, valley. Now, a valley is made up of many fields. Let's say I own the whole valley. And I say, I'm selling you this field in, and then I demarcate the boundaries of, you know, and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, it borders on Shimon's field on this side and Ruben's field on that side. I'm using the language that Rashi uses here. Uh, sorry, the Rashbam uses here. So I sold you this field in a big agdola. Even though I told you the big, wide borders, not of this particular field, I was just trying to identify which valley I was talking about that I was selling you the field. So again, it's going to be the exact same structure. So these are kind of fun to ping to do because you just review. If everybody calls a field a field and a valley a valley, pshita. Obvious. It's obvious you don't need Rav Nachman to tell us this. Sadezavinle, Bikalos Avinle. I said I'm selling you a field that obviously didn't mean the whole valley. Ella de Bikanami Kari le Sadev. Some people call the valley a field, then Kule Zavinla. Then you can easily prove that I sold you the whole thing because I gave you all the boundaries. And I said field, which really could mean valley. Lotsricha, it's needed in the which case. Di Ika de la Sade, the Kari le Sade, will be Gabika, Bikanami de la Biga Kari le Sade. It's a place where some people call the field a field and a valley a valley, and some people call a valley a field. So you might think that you had a claim that you could claim I bought the whole valley. Therefore, it comes to teach me to have it since I should have written, if that was really the case, I should have written, I'm not leaving anything from the sale over for myself. And I didn't write that because I should have written that. Okay, we're going to see later that someone said that you're actually supposed to write that. If you're really selling the whole thing, you should have written those words. Since I didn't write them, it must be I did leave over things for myself and I really was only talking about that one field and that's what he's teaching. Us. So now comes the big tzrichet. Why did he need to teach us the case in the, the halach in both cases? If you had just a house case, you would have said, a bira and a house are not used for the same purposes. The bira is the in-between place where people get from there to their houses, but they don't actually live in the bira. So it might be, right? then you might have said that's why the bira is not included in the word house, even though some people might, but we're going to side that way. But a valley is just field, 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 field. So, the whole thing is a field, basically. It's like one giant field just split up into smaller fields. Maybe you would think it really is all included. So now you have to go the other way. If you had had bika, you would have said, In a bika, there's really no way to demarcate boundaries. Because it's very hard to say where one field ends and the next one starts in words. If I could say it borders on Ruvain's field on this side, Shimon's field on that side, you know, this one's on that side, etc., that would be, right, that's when my, that's we're talking about here where I own all the fields. So to come up with a way to describe where this one ends and that one starts, there's no good way to describe it. The best way to describe it, well, it's where it borders on someone else's field. But that's already the boundary of the big ah. So there I had no other way to do it but to say it in that way. And therefore, we're going to assume that when I gave you the boundaries, it was just to say where the field is, but I didn't mean I'm going to give you all of them. It's just I had no better way to demarcate the boundaries of my small particular field that I was selling you. But buy it to have a little mean the low meds are but a house, it's very easy. If we have a lot of houses in a bira, each house looks a little different, okay? Even if you build them all the same way, there's always some sort of difference, okay? Like Ra the Rashbam says, you know, that. The thickness of the walls, the length of the walls, the this, the color, anything could be different. So because of that, I could have demarcated the boundaries. And I didn't. Instead, I said the whole thing, right? And when I did the boundaries, I did the boundaries of the bira, not the particular house. It must be kule zavinle. It must be I really am selling you the whole thing. And therefore, sri. In other words, again, this is why you would have thought if you had one, you couldn't have learned the other. That's why Rav Nachman had to teach you both cases to teach you it's really specifically in both. 
Kaman az lahad amar of Mary barad bat Shmuel. Okay, get rid of the words bere. We get rid of the words bar shilat. Okay, those are corrected. So I'm reading the corrected version. Rab Mary, the son of the daughter of Shmuel. This whole story why is called by Shmuel's daughter's name. We've seen this before. I'm not going to go into it now. Anyway, he says, Mishmei da'abai. We want to know, according to who does this go? This a, seems like a rhetorical question because it's very obvious. Hi, my de le lechavre. If you're selling something to your friend, you have to write. If you're selling the entire thing, you have to write these words, and that's what we saw before. I'm not leaving any part of this cell for myself. According to this, this go, this obviously fits with what we saw. Because his whole thing was based on the assumption that you should have written that and you didn't. So therefore, it must mean you didn't mean the whole thing. You did, you would have written it because he obviously holds like Rabbi Mary, who says you have to you have to do the whole thing. You have to write that. And because you didn't write it, that's why it doesn't include it. Okay, now we're done with that section. Okay, again, what do we do here? We basically got here because we said, why the cheder shalachnim? What's the chiddush there? Okay, let's just review the daft at this point because I'll already kind of get to it because then we'll just end it. So we started with what is included in the sale of a house, what's not included really, the yitzia, the, the cheder, and the gag, okay, and then depending on what kind of roof. And then we defined what a yitzia is. We showed three different, right, three words that all mean the same thing, yitzia, tzela, and ta. From there, we move to okay. Oh, we talked about the four amot, right? It has to have four amot, this yitzia, for it to be considered separate. Otherwise, it's canceled to the house. We dealt with the boar. What do we do with the boar? That's totally different. Then we had this cheder, and we said, well, what's the unique halacha here? To which we said, it's to say, even if I demarcated border war, uh, wider boundaries, so I'm selling you this house in this boundary, Still, if the cheder and perhaps even the yitzia is within those boundaries, it's not part of the sale. Just like Rav Nachman said, and then we went into where, what Rav Nachman said, where he said it, both in the case of the house and the case of the field, and then why he said it in both. And now we're going to have a case about other things, about sales and wording, and, and we're going to end with this. I'm selling you land, singular land, okay, R is singular, of Bechia, of the house of Chia. If he had two pieces of land, we'll call Bechia's land. Basically, let's say I bought land from Chia. This is like the Bebar season that we had about a month ago. Um, if I sold you land that was called Beit Chia's land, but I had two, I said I'm selling you land in singular, and there were two pieces of land, well, it's only one. Okay? Amarav Ashi, Chada Amarle, Tartalo Amarle. I said singular. That means one piece of land. They use the word ara, which means one piece of land. Okay, in English, it doesn't work. Because land could be plural. But in Hebrew, ara is one. Let's see, arata is two. So, i amrle arata. Okay, we, we'll get rid of the word stama based on the box notes. If you just, if you say the word arata, which is plural, miut arata stein. We assume when you say plural land, then it means right, lands. Okay, it means at least two. So basically, you can prove if I have three lands that are Bay Barachia, really, you can only prove two. Because lands is usually, we assume at least the minimum, two. But you would get two. If I say all the land, and that was the Bay Bar season case, and that was the whole problem because it all the land of Bay Bar season, but he really meant what I bought from Bay Bar season and not what, you know, maybe inherited or something. But if you said all the land, right? All the land I have other than, okay, land refers to bustine, I'm sorry, it refers to fields, and it doesn't refer to gardens or um, or vineyards. Iyam zihara, but the term zihara, which we're less familiar with, means afilu, and I'm getting rid of the word bay based on the box notes, afilu bustine o pardise. Then the word zihara is a word that includes lands that mean any kind of land, whether it's a garden, whether it's a, a vineyard, or whether it's a wheat field, all of those are included. Levar mi bate It just doesn't include houses, and it doesn't include slaves. And yamale nichse, I'm just moving to the next line in the next stop because it's just connected in the end of the sentence. If you say nichse, property, then already afilu bate va'avde. Houses and slaves already are considered part of the property. If I tell them, selling you all my property, that would include lands, vineyards, gardens, and houses and slaves.
Okay, so this is all about being, right? The main goal of the, the, the message of this stuff is be careful about your language and what you're including. Be careful about your contracts. Be specific. When you're not specific, it leads to all these disagreements. And again, going back to, it's not really tying, but it sounds like they're really getting to preventative damage, you know, preventing, not for we've seen preventing damage to others, but preventing lack of, right, clarity here. Be clear what is included exactly and know also the guidelines. If you are going to use certain language, this is what it means. With that, we finish for today. Wishing everyone a good week.